What's going on, everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. And today, as an African American ambassador, I want to talk to my African diasporas, my continental Africans who experience xenophobia from African Americans. I want to talk to my African diasporas and my continental Africans who experience hate from African Americans who call themselves FBA, Eidos, and Freedmen. And as a African American, as a African American who has fought for his country of America in war, right? So that means I have displayed the ultimate form of patriotism for my country, the United States of America. Whether you like it or not, I am an African American and America is in fact my country. My African ancestors built this country willingly and unwillingly. And because of that, we do stake claim to this country and the ideals that the country is supposed to be about, even though we have not, we have not lived up to those ideals for, I would say, obvious reasons, right? And so as a true African-American and a patriotic American, because African-Americans are the most patriot, patriotic Americans on the planet, I want to formally apologize for the xenophobic hate that you're receiving from my fellow African-Americans. And I just want you to know that anybody calling themselves FBA, anybody calling themselves ADOS and displaying a xenophobic hate, any African-American utilizing the word tether, they do not represent African-Americans. I want you to know they do not represent African-Americans. They represent their own cult. These people that you're seeing on the internet that are very loud and boisterous with their hate for their own kind, this is the result of 400 years of the transatlantic slave trade and slavery. This is the result, the mental result of what the European has done to us. It's very similar to how the South Africans and their ideologies and mentality is. Now, like I know, there are plenty of Pan-African South Africans that understand and know that they are African first and that South Africa belongs to them. And South Africans have a proud history, a proud warrior history. They are the grandfathers and great grandfathers of African civilization. But because of what the white people have done to them physically and mentally, their minds are distorted and they display such visceral hate towards other Africans. Understand, this is not the African mentality. This is the white mentality burned into the brains of South Africans. And as an African American, we, just like the South Africans, have lived with this European for hundreds of years, and their culture of death and destruction and hate and division has seeped into the African brain. The African American has been fighting alone away from its continent by itself against the most vicious and vile creature the earth has ever seen. And the result of that has caused us to be damaged mentally, very much damaged mentally. I want you all to take in consideration that they took our identity from us. They took our culture from us. They tried to take our culture from us. But they took the knowledge of the origins of that culture. Our African ancestors did the best they could to maintain a semblance of the culture that they had before they were snatched over here. The white man has convinced uneducated, uneducated on purpose African Americans that it was the African that sold us into the transatlantic slave trade. An uneducated person only understands things to be black and white. They don't understand the gray. They don't understand the details of history. They were never taught real history in school. The schools in America teach us that white people went around the world and civilized the world. They taught us that white people went to Africa and civilized the African. This is the curriculum of the European. They gave this to us. They taught their children and they taught our children. 
that white people are the saviors. They gave us Jesus Christ the same way they gave you Jesus Christ. To let you, to, to have you believe that the white people are omnipotent and that white men are omnipotent gods that we should believe wholeheartedly. After 400 years of fighting on a foreign land with no way of getting home, some of us have fallen susceptible to that propaganda. You should understand that. I need you guys to understand that. So the hate and xenophobia that you're getting from African Americans who call themselves FBA, Eidos, Freedmen, and various other divisive names to separate themselves from themselves, understand these are mentally ill Africans who are highly uneducated. And I want you to make a comparison to the highly uneducated Africans on the continent that lives way out in the rural areas that know nothing but their immediate surroundings. Believe it or not, there are African Americans that know nothing of the world outside of their immediate surroundings. They know nothing of the outside world or outside of their, their towns, their villages. They've never traveled. And with the combination of them never traveling, and the combination of being told that white people and white Jesus has been their savior and civilized them and that Africans never contributed anything to society. Understand, white people did a number on us. They did a big number on us. I always like to use the example of the lion and the master at the circus. The white master can convince the lion that it's a pussycat. But clearly, we all recognize that that lion is truly the king of that ring. That's the same thing they did to us. They convinced the African lion that he is a pussycat. And so generations of miseducation, generations of indoctrination, generations of not knowing the origins of the things that you even do as an African-American, generations of being belittled, being hated, being afraid, being in survival mode. And we all know when you're in survival mode, you don't have time to be creative. You don't have time to learn. You don't have time to explore. You don't have time to pontificate. You don't have time to ask why, because you're trying to survive. We African-Americans have been doing that for hundreds of years over here. But in America's case, we've been doing it for about 200 something years. There are people, the, the, the late great James Earl Jones, who just died, was born in the 1930s. And he just died in 2024. One of the greatest African Americans, one of the greatest Africans in history, who represented African people to the highest esteem, to the, to the, to the maximum of all excellence, just passed away and went home. Finally, he gets the rest. He was born in 1930 something. Understand his parents were most likely slaves or their parents were slaves. Slavery just ended. It didn't end 500 years ago as the white people would try to have us casually to believe that it's been 500 years since slavery. Slavery just ended. And after slavery, we had Reconstruction for a little while African people in America thought That finally we were free White people saw How we started to build ourselves up Once we were free and just like The demon orcs that they are As displayed on the world stage As you see today They crushed and killed us Because they had the numerical advantage They had the infrastructural advantage They had the advantage of knowing Where they're from and having connections To that land which is Europe their homeland not America. If you just want to see how evil Europeans are, just pay attention to what they're doing now. And it's not far fetched to see how evil they were against us just a few hundred years ago. Jim Crow. If you want to see what Jim Crow looked like, just look at what's happening in Palestine right now with those white Europeans who went down there as criminal illegal aliens into the Middle East and started attacking and moving in and and just and just destroying the native population of that area. There's examples today of how evil Europeans are naturally and culturally. And we see it's on display now. Indiscriminate killing because they do not value life. 
They do not value any life other than European life. As a matter of fact, white people don't even value their own lives, as you can see in Ukraine. At the same time, Europeans were going around the world destroying cultures, destroying languages, and stealing everything that makes them white people feel like they are great because they never done anything. They never built anything. They steal everything. They take credit for everything, but they did nothing. We Africans gave them everything that they have, every all the knowledge that they have, we Africans have given them. And because of their low self-esteem, because of their envy turned into hate and jealousy, they took all of our stuff, including us, and then convinced us that we are the ones who did it to ourselves. So now you have African Americans who are convinced that Africans just sold us into slavery. So you have uneducated, broken, mentally broken African Americans who believe that the entire continent was just having a good time selling off a few Africans and they think they are just these Africans that were sold off by all of Africa because that's what the white people want us to believe. Because the white person's only power is trickery. The white person's power is only trickery and deception. Death, destruction, trickery, and deception is their culture. And what I'm trying to tell you guys, my diasporans and my continental Africans, a lot of you guys had the ability and privilege to, to, deal, with, to deal with this situation in an almost homogenous, homogenous way. Continental Africans, even though you guys were being colonized, you had the ability to still be on your homeland. You had the ability to still be with your tribe, to still be at the root of your civilization over this 400 years of white dominance over the world. That means you get to remember why you eat black eyed peas that you call white beans. You get to remember what the locks actually mean on your head. You get to remember why you're pounding yam and mashing the potato. You get to remember all these things. You understand the origin because if you had the ability, even though you're dealing with the European, you dealt with it on your own homeland. It's much different when you're displaced and discombobulated into a foreign land that you know nothing of. And in such small numbers that you're unable to defeat wholeheartedly the European who can always reinforce themselves from their homeland with their ships. But even with that, the African that were brought over here, we still fought because we're warriors. We had no choice. What the continental Africans, what the, what the African Americans don't understand is that yes, because of Africans warring with other Africans, because of Africans' tribes fighting other African tribes, because the European was able to manipulate one tribe kingdom over another tribe kingdom and war captives and, and bands of, of gangs who stole other Africans to sell to the Dutch, to the French, to the British. That did happen. But what the African Americans don't understand is that we African Americans are not only the victims who got captured during those situations. But we're also the perpetrators who captured other Africans and put those in them situations. The uneducated African American don't realize that we are a combination of all of those African tribes and kingdoms who were distracted by fighting each other and both did harm to each other. And one would capture one and then one would get back and capture the other and one would get back and capture the other and the other would get back and capture the other. And before you know it. Because of the fight and division, the tribal division that we had in those days, and not understanding that the Europeans didn't play by the same game that we played, all of us ended up over here, well not over here, I'm in Africa, but ended up in the Americas together. And all those tribes who now still to this day have historical issues with each other, those tribes, the ones that were brought to America, had no choice but to unite under the pressure. The Igbo and the, and the Akan and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the Yoruba, and the, and the Madenke, no matter what issues they had in the, in the continent, when they got to America, they, they were understood that they were being oppressed by the same European, that they were in the same boat, literally, that they were in the same plantation. And they had to come together because they had no choice. African-Americans are the combination of West Africa. We are the Nigerians in America. 
Every one of you tribes in Nigeria are represented by African-Americans. Every accomplishment African-Americans have made, which is vast, which you already know. All of our influences and our scientists and our inventions. But all of that is just cultural consistency. And even the African-Americans don't understand, despite all the great things that African-Americans have done and contributed to the world, many inventions that the entire world enjoys to the day, to the day is simply a cultural consistency from the great Africans that have been inventing things and pontificating science for millennia. But you see, we don't understand that because that portion was ripped from us, you understand. But because it's in our DNA as Africans, we still do it anyway, even without the knowledge of where we get it from, where our power lies. And it behooves the European for their own survival. Listen, it behooves, it behooves the European for their own survival to maintain separation from the African American that represents a unified Africa and the continental Africans. Because with our knowledge and understanding of the beast, with the warriors that we have become and the aggression that we have built up, being warriors for 400 years, being in the battle for 400 years, the knowledge we have to give to our continental Africans that's not privy to that information is dangerous to the European. Because African people have the same capability of being as aggressive as our, of our warriors of past. You see, we're too nice. African people are too nice. African Americans are too nice because we are the mothers and fathers of civilization. We are naturally peaceful people connected with the earth. That's how we want to be. If other races and other groups of people knew how to act like us, this planet would be a much better place. But as our children, they do not know how to act. As our children, they're not as humanistic as we are. As our children, they don't have the experience us African have to cope with life. African people have coped with things that these, these groups of people can't even fathom. And if you go further back in history, it was the African that populated this planet. It was the African that had to battle the Neanderthal, the Denisovan, and various other hominid creatures to dominate this earth as the number one primate on this planet. It was the African that battled the woolly mammoths and battled all these giant beasts as we traveled and traversed the world. It was the African that made sure humans survived on this planet. Us Africans, it was us. Everybody else sits on the foundation of how great and powerful African people are and how we have the ability to cope with pain and suffering. And that the ability to cope with pain and suffering because of our, our traversing around the world gave us the power to be able to cope with these white people in their devilish demon ways. These Neanderthals that we never finished off in Europe that seem to mix with a little bit of humans and now we see how unhumanistic they are. Because they are in fact Neanderthals and they admit it themselves. We're still dealing with another hominid that mean to do us harm. They don't, they're not like us legitimately, biologically. But I just want you to understand that these FBA and ADOs, they are a symptom of what white people have done to us. And I am honestly, I'm very much glad that they at least name themselves as not to be mixed up with African Americans, Africans who live in America, who are proud Africans. If you just look at African American history, true African American history, you will see that Africans have always, African Americans have always been proud to be Africans. We just didn't have a way to get to Africa. We just didn't have a connection to Africa. We have no ships. We have no networks to, to go back and forth. We are just now getting that now. We didn't have access to the books that the white people stole from us. We didn't have access to our history that they stole from us. But now we have access to it. So there are some Africans who are woke. That's what the term woke is for. Woke means Africans waking up to who we are. It's for the lion to wake up and realize he's not a pussycat but a lion, the king of the jungle. And for example, every time you see in a ring with that master and that lion, when that lion get whipped one too many times, what does that lion do? When that lion is hit and yelled at one too many times, what does it do? It realizes the lion. And when it roars, the master gets scared. And when it swipes his hand, the master can do nothing because the whip is not even powerful enough to stop a lion that knows he's a lion. And we Africans need to wake up and realize we are the lion. We are the elephant. 
And we have a long memory and we'll never forget. And we are taking power right now despite. But as Africans and continent and Caribbeans and African Americans unite. As we unite, as it's happening right now. The powers that be, that mean to do us harm, that's trying to survive the rise of the African will do everything they can, use every trick that they can, every divide and conquer tactic that they can to slow down the inevitable takeover of the African. And the two pieces to that puzzle, puzzle there are two pieces to that puzzle that they desperately want to keep separated. That's the African-American and the Nigerian. You see, African Americans don't understand Nigeria may be a country that you see now, but they don't understand that Nigeria represents many kingdoms, many different African kingdoms, many different people groups who just so happens to be West African, many different phenotypes, many different priest kingdoms, many different empires. They don't understand that all that encompasses in this federal government called Nigeria. They don't even understand that each Nigerian state really represents a kingdom and group of people. They don't see it that way. Because in America, we see the United States of America. So we look at states as just a part of one country, not realizing, because we're not educated, understand, that a state itself is a country. And that a federal government is just a cooperation between countries to work together collectively. America is a, is a state full of countries. That's why it's called the United States of America. They don't even understand that all of the Western Hemisphere is America, from Peru to Canada. That's America. That's why we're called the United States of, of America, because America is the continent. They're not educated to know that the Caribbean is America. Central America is clearly America. South America is America. Canada is America. All of this are America. So that means any African that's in the Western Hemisphere are Americans. We are United, are citizens of the United States of America. They don't understand this. They are not educated. I want you guys to understand this. This is done on purpose. So when you hear them with their xenophobic hate towards Caribbeans, they're talking from a place of ignorance. I deal with them all the time as they're upset with me because I have the nerve to know who I am and understand where my people are. I am proud to be back in Nigeria, the homeland of my ancestors. I'm proud to be educated to know where my ancestors come from. You see, I'm one of the few African Americans that know exactly where his African ancestors landed on this continent. I'm one of the few African Americans that know exactly where his ancestors were enslaved on this continent called America, not this continent. I'm one of the few African Americans who've been able to stand over the unmarked graves marked with giant rocks because it was illegal to put headstones on the slaves in the plantations. I've been able to stand over the headstones and give honor and libations to my ancestors that died as slaves on the plantations in Lynchburg, Virginia. An old plantation that's now an all-girls college and museum. I'm one of the few African Americans that been inside of the slave house that my ancestors had to work for Massa. I'm one of the few African Americans that been inside of the master's house. I've held the chains that was wrapped around my ancestors' necks and arms. I've had it in my hand. I've had it, I had the chains of my ancestors that was wrapped around their necks in my hand. Can you imagine how that feels? Can you imagine how it feels to touch the rock that stands over my ancestors' deceased bodies? Can you imagine how that feels? I'm one of the few African Americans that's educated and understands exactly where he comes from. So nobody can tell me, convince me who I am. But the thing is, there are many African Americans that don't have that privilege as we have been discombobulated and displaced even in this country. So that's why you have manipulators, just like we had manipulators in what I call Kunarians. We had Kunarians in Africa who, who wanted to make a profit and sell their own brothers and sisters to the white man for some umbrellas and for bottles of wine and for piano and for guitars and things like that. For worthless items. 
And the African Americans don't understand that you guys know that. And just like we had Cunarians on the continent that will sell their own family members into the transatlantic slave trade, we have African Americans that will sell their own people to the white man right now. It's the same mentality. Just like you see white people with their same mentality as they commit death and destruction and genocide across the world. We have Africans who don't even recognize that they're African. Clarence Thomas, the biggest coon on the planet. The biggest coon on the planet, Clarence Thomas. We have people like Tariq Nasheed who, who takes advantage of uneducated Africans to manipulate them into giving him money. Who sold xenophobia and hate and bounced from position to position to position. He went from a pimp, a rapper, to a pan-African, to a pro-black, I hate all other Africans, to now he's some white supremacist pump talking, talking pundit. For somebody who always talk about white supremacy, he now works for white supremacy. It's people like Tariq who uneducated black people follow because they deify these people because they are celebrities. As we deify our celebrities, just like we deify the rapper who makes music about destroying their community while they get rich and move out the community. The social media guy is the new rapper as he destroys his community and get rich and then moves out of the community. And because our people are so hurt and so weak and so mentally ill due to the, the effects of slavery, of Jim Crow, of the continuous pressure of racism in this country, we get tired. It's tiresome. And understand, when a generation is, is, is destroyed and then they have children, what do you think they're passing along? When a generation is uneducated, what do they pass along to the next generation? So as our generations have been suffering over the years, we have been losing more and more and more and more of who we are. As white Jesus has been pumped in our face, we forgot the power of the African. As, as Islam and, and, and Asian religions have been inundated in our community, we forget the power of the African. We don't value who we are because we don't know who we are because they took who we are from us. We don't even speak our own language. We can't even pontificate in our own more advanced languages. We can only think in a simplistic way of the white English language. And even with that, as Africans, we have made our own type of language within English that's more advanced than the English that Europeans speak. But yet they make fun of that. The African-American vernacular is more advanced than the regular European vernacular. But in that case, white people still look down upon that. Everything we do, they look down upon that. Every move we make that's African, they look down upon that. From, us, from our black women shaking their, shaking their tail feather. That's African cultural consistency. You come, in, you come to the continent, every woman is shaking their tail feather. It's part of nature. It's what we do. We dance. We vibrate. We connect with the earth. That's what we do. We will always shake our butt. We will always, our women will always put colors and things and decorate their hair. But you see, in America, they call that ghetto. But when you break down what ghetto is, it's really just African cultural consistency in America that we've been fighting to hold on to. But since we don't know the origin, we allow white people to tell us about ourselves and belittle the things that makes us African. Ghetto is not the look that we have. Ghetto is the mentality. The hate for oneself. The disrespect of our African culture. We don't even recognize it. That's why we think it's ghetto. But in actuality, when you come to the continent, you see those very same colorful hair. You see that very same swag. You see that wonderful black girl, very same uh, attitude. You know, the black woman, strong. The black woman, the West African black woman is the most powerful woman on this planet. She has a strong personality. But in America, they call it ghetto. In America, they say it's a problem with that with the African-American woman. She's too aggressive. But we have these black men who've been demasculated they're not as manly as they're supposed to be so because they're not protruding the masculinity that they're supposed to be because they've been beat down and beat down and destroyed and told they ain't shit for so long they can't even recognize that their true masculinity is meant to match up with the strength of the female the black female and her femininity it's more powerful than any woman's femininity the black woman's femininity is so powerful it matches the white man's masculinity 
That's how powerful the black woman is. But you got weak black men who don't recognize that because they don't know who they are. They don't know how to tap into their real manliness. They're being demasculated. This is all by design. These are the tricks of the white man. That's why I'm so aggressive. Because this is how a black man is supposed to be. I'm aggressive, but I also know how to treat my black woman. I can recognize that strong femininity and I know how to wield it like a master. A black woman is a black woman no matter where you go. That Nigerian black woman and the African American black woman is the same woman. The Nigerian man and the African American man is the same man. It's just one don't know who he is and the other does. But the one that don't know who he is still has the aggression but don't understand where the aggression comes from. And the other one has the aggression but don't use the aggression because he's too damn nice. That's why they don't want us to unite because we are both pieces that connect like this. And as soon as black people wake up, as soon as the Jamaican wake up, because guess what? The Jamaican and the African-American are the same African. You see, we've been so miseducated, they don't even know about the American slave trade. That's what happened after the transatlantic slave trade. The Jamaican plantations in the North Carolina and the Georgian plantations were swapping out Africans. There are quote unquote foundational black Americans in Jamaica right now. There are Jamaicans that are foundational black Americans right now. It also goes for Trinidad and Tobago. We're the same African, the same Yoruba, the same Igbo. That's what we are. And that's as a Pan-African, I'm here to tell you that's who you are. And as a representative of African-Americans who knows that his family, his Jamaican family, his Trinidad family, his Caribbean family, his Cuban family, his Haitian family, Haitians, one of the greatest African warriors this planet has ever seen. African-Americans, one of the greatest warriors this planet has ever seen. We literally saved Europe twice, both in the air and on the ground. We are legends. One day they will talk about the African American as legends. And they'll put respect on our name. Just like the great Haitians defeated the greatest European army the world has ever seen. Of the greatest army the Europeans have ever manifested. Destroyed by Africans. Unified. That's why white people do everything they can to keep Haiti down. They'll never forgive the Haitians for embarrassing Europeans on the world stage. That's why they talk about Chicago. Chicago, founded by a Haitian. Our brothers in arms and battles over here against the European. That's why they talk about Chicago. And they got coons who help white supremacy belittle Chicago. They don't see any other state. They don't see any other country. They don't care about the truth. Anything black excellence, they mean to destroy and belittle. That's why it's time for African Americans, African Caribbeans, and continental Africans to wake up their minds. Use that genius level mind that you have to understand when you're being tricked, when you're being lied to. Have some respect for your own people. It's okay to have pride and reverence for other Africans because those Africans are you. When they talk about African-American history, they're talking about African history. The history of America is African history in America. That's American history. That's real American history. Still to this day, everything great about America is African. If we take our ball and go home, you got nothing. Everything great about South America, Central America, and their culture that they're so proud of is African culture. To their food, to their dance, to their music, everything they're proud of is African culture, West African culture. We Bantu people are the pride of the planet. We're powerful. And I'm trying to wake you up to understand who you are. You ain't weak. You're warriors. You're geniuses. You're builders. This little shit we going through for 500 years, it ain't nothing. We've been through this shit before. This is just a bleep in our history. And I'm trying to bring back that pride that we're supposed to have as Africans. I'm trying to wake you up to who you are. You as an African-American can have pride in the Nigerian. You can have pride in the Haitian. You can have pride in the Jamaican because those are your brothers. And you Jamaicans, you Haitians, you Africans can have pride in African-Americans because those are your brothers, your sisters. Understand, we are one. 
Yes, we are diverse. We are different. We speak different languages. We have slightly different practices within our culture, but it's all generally the same. Cultural consistency. We are people of priest kings, just like the great Egyptians. The Pharaoh was a priest king. Cultural consistency throughout Africa. You had the priest king who was powerful. Then you had the king who had reverence for the priest king. We've always been spiritual. These religions are nothing but a false fictional manifestational force of African greatness in history and culture. We don't need any other title like Jew and all that. Jews, they made that up. We are the African. Those stories are African stories deep within the heart of Africa. They tricked you to believe that it's some place away, far away from Africa. It all belongs to us. And it's up to us to flex our minds, flex our bodies, flex our souls, get back some of that African spirit and put respect on Baba. Put some respect on our ancestors who fought and died, and sacrificed themselves so that we can be here and do the things that we're doing right now. It's our duty as the descendants of greatness to continue to be great so we can pass along greatness to our children so they can read about us in the history books. We are the heroes. Understand who you are. Anyway, once again, I apologize for the xenophobic hate that my African Americans have displayed on the internet. It's embarrassing. And I know they're going to continue to do it. And I know some of them are going to come in this comment section and talk and spew their ignorance. But understand African people. All Africans will not be saved. All Africans will not be convinced that they're African. Some will continue to worship white people. We must understand that and move on from the weak ones. Because in this planet, only the strong survives. And that's just the rules of nature. Anyway, that's all I got to say. It's Afro Think Tank. Learn some, teach them. I'm out.